Our journey today starts a little bit over two and a half years ago in early 2022. A female known as Charlotte Chance was posting some gym selfies and looking pretty decent. Now, unlike many other stories on this channel, these selfies didn't have any harmful intent. There wasn't an OnlyFans involved or anything like this. I think this is just a show of hard work. Basically, these were your average gym girl selfies. The most important thing to note is that this female has a really impressive physique, arguably something that many women would strive for, and of course, the many freaks of Instagram. But if we move over to her early Facebook, you'll see the archetype of her photos change quite a bit into the gym girly to now more of a casual girl, and you get a really good depiction of who this Char gal really is. Or Cher? Char? Char? We'll just go with Char. Codename C for the rest of the video. Codename C was a seemingly normal girl from Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. One with some obvious aspirations for working out and being in the gym. But at this point, there was really nothing near bodybuilding territory for the moment. But as you surf these early photos on her profile, something becomes very clear within certain comment sections. Now, most of the comment sections are disabled on those early posts, but a few of them aren't disabled. Like on this post, and this is a very common archetype of posts for her, of the car scene with the trending audio, uh, this commenter says only half a year ago, and you can already see the difference in your face. Stop abusing roids, you'll be disfigured for life. With 25 likes on an archaic post, it's pretty impressive. Many people are interested in what's happened to this female. Now, when a gal looks like this, a comment like the one I just showed would strike you as odd. You might have heard of Shaw or at least seen her videos in your feed because many of them have multi-millions of views. If you haven't seen it, this this is a post from a month ago. It's the same kind of fashion, in the car posing to some trending audio. While the specific video is quite flattering to her in the lighting and the way that she does it, there are a few interesting things to point out, and especially when we're comparing it to her earlier self. Especially when we scroll down to the comment section, this is certainly the first thing worth pointing out. Comments like, ugh, who finds this attractive? Or why does this dude sort of look like a woman? Or this is gross. Now it's clear that there's something running a muck here. Something is very common between all of these comments and you'll clearly see that the trend is hate and specifically calling her very masculine like the second thing that you'll notice is her facial features have changed quite a bit from the first video i had shown you her jawline has grown to quite a large degree and thankfully we have the science to explain why that is and i can do it for you here quite easily the review shown here talks directly about this matter and when women are endogenously exposed to excess androgens due to pcos or polycystic ovarian syndrome or other natural causes or they're just using exogenous hormones, such as those male hormones like we're talking about here, fact of the matter is, is there is quite a lot of feature changes in a female body. In fact, on this Wikipedia page, it reviews many detailed studies on trans therapy in women converting to men and detailing the effects of their facial features. The mandibles, jawline, and brow ridge have relatively high densities of androgen receptors, and when androgens bind to these receptors, they stimulate cellular activities that lead to growth of bone and connective tissue in these areas. As well, androgens can directly influence the proliferation of osteoblasts. These are bone forming cells that are activated, mediated in part by at least the androgen receptor. This will lead to the remodeling of facial structures and bones. And this androgen receptor mediated process results in a larger jawline, usually a bigger fore head ridge and ultimately some other not so great changes as well. And the third thing to point out is that she's still highly attractive in my book. This isn't a person that's unattractive by any means and she's not pulling a Meg that we talked about before in a video. She's clearly not excessively abusing androgens but certainly using a good deal of them or at least she's early on into her career. So we have a female that went from this to this. What exactly is she doing that led to these changes? And if she wants to stop developing these features, what would she have to do if also wanting to desirably build a bigger physique? To understand this, first we have to dig into why she might be taking performance enhancing drugs as well as why many people take them in the first place. PEDs are substances that enhance physical performance and increase muscle mass, reduce body fat, and boost endurance. While these effects can improve a competitive edge or physique goals, they do come with a host of side effects, especially for women. Because androgen are male hormones 
and that is what most performance enhancing drugs are consistent of, women do face the brunt of side effects. These androgens stimulate changes in muscle growth, bone structure, and even facial features like we discussed before. These changes happen because the body's tissues, particularly in the areas of the jaw and brow ridge, respond to the androgenic effects of these drugs, leading to more masculine features over time. Some people define the risk of using steroids as worth it when compared to the benefit. Whether that benefit is social media fame and developing a career, or maybe it's bodybuilding entirely, it is worth it in their books. Now, is it going to be worth it in 10 years? That's the question. And simply put, we don't know. Sadly, we simply can't hack biology without repercussions. Otherwise, we would all be super centenarians looking about 20 years old very easily. In the case of code word C, she had used some male hormones some of which were synthesized derivatives of testosterone, where they modify the carbon chain to result in a different effect. What women will commonly use is Anivar, dihydrotestosterone derivatives like Anivar or Primabolin, which is also another dihydrotestosterone derivative. In the bodybuilding world, we call this a DHT compound. While these compounds are considered more selective and quote unquote safe, they still have massive deleterious effects for men and women. They initially were developed for the use of the androgen sensitive for other therapies such as tissue loss or bone demineralization. Great treatments, it's just unfortunately they're not very selective, and so women who use these drugs tend to masculinize, and children who use these drugs tend to hypermature, which isn't a good thing. And what's really important to understand is that the dose for a female to be converted into a male in hormone-affirming therapy is about 60 milligrams of testosterone per week. Unfortunately, this is also the dose that many women start using androgens at, even though they clearly don't have to, and there's many other routes to benefit. Usually the reason that they start this high of a dose is because they're listening to people's advice who are from an archaic state of bodybuilding and haven't really learned anything new and they're just applying what their coach had applied to them and so on and so forth down the line and no one really cares to try anything new because well don't fix what's not broken essentially however normal female hrt if a female does need testosterone replacement therapy which is a very real thing a lot of females think that testosterone is a male hormone only not saying that you have a higher serum total testosterone but you're ratio of estrogen to testosterone is much different. But that therapy starts at about three milligrams of testosterone per week, usually exceeding this, which is about three to seven milligrams being normal, and then eight to plus whatever is sort of exceeding this, leads to exceptional and outstanding results in terms of physicality. Now, in my experience and with what I have done, I think the best experience that Code Word C could have had was to simply have used something else, peptides, for instance, in specific growth hormone. Applying a dose that is quite high high, something around four to six I use a day in a female can be a, such a powerful response. Well, normal replacement therapies for growth hormone in females is about one to two I use for anti-aging benefits. The excess of growth hormone, unlike androgens, won't cause masculinizing features rapidly like it would using androgens, nor will it change your bone structure, nor will it lead to the development of facial hair or other body hair. But what it will certainly do is lead to a leaner, bigger, and more compelling physique. Our team coach Kat is a really great example of this. She heavily leverages growth hormone with no to minimal use of androgens at all. And she currently just won her IFBB Pro card, so congratulations, Kat, you're amazing. But she doesn't have any masculinized features or vocal changes at all. However, code word C simply can't say the same, as you can hear here. So treat yourself with self-respect and be better. Now, before all the fucking chuds come into the comments section and tell me that I'm being so mean and just rage baiting like Greg Doucette, grow the fuck up and pull your dick out from between your legs. <laughs> This is called edutainment. I'm trying to combine entertainment with education, and I'm using people as an example because it's highly enlightening to see the realistic effects of what's happening to people. I'm not saying anything that's untrue. I'm not saying anything that's a stretch of imagination. I'm not even blaming someone for what they're doing. I'm just telling you the facts. I could just be telling you this from behind a spreadsheet, but no one would really give a shit. I wouldn't get views. And at the end of the day, you wouldn't learn anything. It is the most entertaining form of education that's going to enlighten you the most. And so I try to provide that with these kind of videos. As well as I think Code Word sees a great person and more popularity her way is great. But at the end of all of this, was it worth it? Did everything that she do to herself and continues to do to herself have merit? Well, this question is actually impossible for me to answer. And it as, as well for you. I've spoken to Code Word C many times. I 
talk to her on whatsapp occasionally and to be honest she's very happy and content with the way things are she enjoys her lifestyle and she enjoys bodybuilding and she's not upset with her choices and i fucking love that confidence in one's character is probably the biggest thing that you can have in life however you may share different opinions and this is what i think is important because here is the reality of the situation that i think you could learn from could she have been sponsored by one of the biggest clothing companies in fitness vq if she wasn't on peds Maybe, but probably not. Could she have gotten a deal with Hilly Mix if she wasn't on PDs? Possibly, but most likely not. Could she have gotten several hundred thousand followers without PEDs? You could say she could, but maybe she would have to go a different avenue. You see, the reality is, is that she's now making multiple thousands of dollars and living a great life due to her choices. While those choices do have a very clear sacrifice, she's getting to work online and make a very good living for herself, all because she just started posting on the internet and taking a little bit of steroids. And I think there's really something great there to reflect upon, which is when you say yes to something, you usually say no to something else in everything you do in life. Often in life, you have to make a whole hard choice and completely do it with spontaneity. There is no real way to know the outcome of all of your decisions and thus this is what makes you human. We may make a choice in life that negatively impacts us for the rest of our lives, but we also might make a choice that positively impacts us for the rest of our lives. It isn't so black and white. In code word C's instance, it's really hard to say how she truly perceives this choice internally, but she's made a living online, which is more than most of you can say, and she has the liberty to go all over the world if she chooses to. As well as she's just enjoying the pursuit of being a bodybuilder and training as well as posting content. And as I often do say, as long as you're enjoying the passage of time, that is the art of living life in its finest. I do think code word C is a great case to show what happens to females when they do take androgens, especially at possibly excessive doses. As well, it's a great case to show people what it can take to actually be an influencer. Are the risks worth it? Well, I can't answer that for you, but you could let me know down in the comments below and I'm happy to read them and talk to you guys down there. As well, if you haven't already subscribed, it does me a huge favor and it really seriously helps me continue to post these videos every single day. We do have a Discord group where we discuss things like pharmacology down below in the description. Join that if you'd like to. It is a paid group, but it does help this channel directly. So if you want to talk to me, they'll see me there.